You're going to need to download the file rsa.rkt from somewhere. This is how I do it, and I put it in a handy directory or folder. You'll also want to start up Dr. Racket, and this is how I do it. Your mileage may vary. When Dr. Racket starts up in the definitions pane, you'll want a require statement for both to HTTP image and for rsa.rkt. This is how I do it. Type F5 to read in those definitions. Some tests should succeed. And now you're going to need a giraffe in order to encrypt it. So I go out and find a giraffe copy that image, right-click to copy, and I'm going to name it Jerome. I should have probably named them Jeromes, but that's how it goes. Jerome answers to his, their name. Now I want a list of the colors in Jerome. Here's how I make the list. And it's a rather long list. So I'm not going to examine every element. Let's just look at the first five elements. So there you go. Four parts. R, G, B, and alpha intensities. I could represent those four intensities as a 32-bit number by making the first digit something in the range 0 to 255, the next digit something in that range. And I actually have a utility that I built that changes a color into a 32-bit integer. So that's what the first color looks like. But Remember, I've got about 26,000 plus colors, so I'm going to break them up into blocks of 100 by using another utility that I wrote that turns lists into quotients of lists or chunks of lists. And so now I just have 266 chunks of length 100 of colors. And now I want to convert each of those colors into a, well, into a 3200-bit number. I use the same strategy. Each digit of the number is going to be a 32-bit digit, and they'll have 100 digits each. So for each of the little 100 element color lists, I'm going to turn it into a 3200 bit number. Using color list to integer. These are rather large numbers. Let's look at the first one in Jerome number list. Okay, try to memorize that number. We'll quiz you about it later. But for now, let's look at how we might encode it. We publish the number n, which is a 4096-bit number. We publish e, which is a much shorter number. D, we keep to ourselves, so please don't tell anybody. And now I can encode all the numbers in J. 
Jerome number list. That I'll call my encoded list Jerome encoded number list. I'm going to be doing some heavy lifting here. Each number on this list I raise to the power e and I take the result modulo n, that is after division by n. Because e is not too too big, I get a result fairly quickly. And the first number on this list, if you memorize the first number in Jerome number list, you notice that this one's different. So it's another humongous number thousands of bits. It's not the same as D and also it's not the same as the first number in Jerome number list. Now if I want to decode this, I'm going to take the same approach as before except I'm going to raise each number in the encoded number list to a different power, to the power D. D, being a much bigger number, means that raising to the power D takes many more steps. And in fact, this next process, decoding, takes several minutes on my computer, so I will speed this up by playing some Baroque music. <laughs> We've got the list decoded, so let's see if we can turn it back into a graphic. Let's first check whether the decoded list is the same set of numbers as we started with with Jerome number list. Yep, that hash T says that it's true, they're equal. So now I want to turn the numbers on this list back into chunks of a hundred colors. So I'm just reversing the steps that I took previously. So for each encoded or decoded number, I'm going to turn an integer into a color list. So I'm going to end up with a list of lists of colors. And that proceeds quickly. And now I want to append all those lists to each other. So I apply the append operation to the entire list of lists. Finally, I have a list of colors. Let's see if I can turn that into an image. I need to tell Colorless to bitmap the width and the height to slice the list of colors up into. So I'll use the width and height from Jerome. Well, that's odd. I got the width and the height in the wrong order, so I sliced up Jerome the wrong way. So let's do that again. Let's list the width before the height this time. And there we go, we've encoded, and then with a bit of work, decoded Jerome's image.